Hi everyone, before I start, I want to tell you something that most of the books that I read are on Kindle. So uh, recently I read a lot of books on Kindle. And the reason for that is that I live in non-English speaking country. That means getting book is very expensive here. So there are no libraries you can borrow books from. And the books that come from abroad are very expensive, the shipping costs especially. So I try to buy books on Kindle and it's cheaper and it's easier. And the second reason is that I don't want to have a lot of books in my room and space is so limited and I try to kind of minimize that way I can have fewer books the ones that I really like so yeah that's and the third reason is just you know just being kind of on the move all the time and it's, I want to live a sort of a very minimal kind of lifestyle where I don't have to have a lot of clatter so one of my dreams is to go and live in Mongolia inside of one of these uh, yurt just kind of well, I know it's going to be tough you know winter is terrible and Mongolia is cold but you know it's a dream and if you're interested in that kind of dreams, let me know um, so that's out of the way let me just talk about the books that I have okay let me start with this shelf this shelf is mostly English novels or novels from England so we're starting with uh, Daniel Defoe's Robinson Crusoe I've got two copies I don't know why maybe I just stole one and then I've got Thomas Hardy he's my favorite writer to be honest from England because he writes about the countryside and his, his language is really beautiful he was a great poet and then I've got the wackiest English novel of all time Lawrence Stan's Tristram Shandy this is a very unique and very bizarre but extremely funny novel and I would like to make a video about this in the future so it's 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 a fantastic novel groundbreaking and then I've got the um, Somerset Moham's the, this is a fantastic novel this is based on a French painter Paul Gauguin I think and he went sort of nuts he quit his job and left his family and moved to Tahiti and so this is based on his life on uh, Gauguin's life and and the writing is really beautiful and especially the description of the paintings and so I would like to make a video about this as well in the future next we've got the Bronte sisters out of all three Bronte sisters Emily Bronte is my favorite and Wuthering Heights is my favorite novel and it's gothic style very dark and it's it looks at the wild side of human emotion so it's really beautiful then I've got the Joseph Conrad's The Heart of Darkness it's it's one of those novels, it's very short. For some reason I haven't been able to finish it. It's about colonialism in Africa and uh, the River Congo seems endless. I've managed to read like halfway through but always I just quit. I cannot finish it for some reason. So maybe River Congo is, you know, endless. And then I've got a philosophical novel. So Friedrich Nietzsche is one of my favorite philosophers and this is part novel, part philosophy and Nietzsche wasn't a big fan of a single truth and he questioned the single truth idea. So as you know, Zoroaster or Zoroastrianism is said to be the first monotheistic religion in the world. So they came up with the idea of single god. Here, Friedrich Nietzsche makes him to go back and renounce his one god idea. And that's kind of taking revenge on this guy. So it's, um, it's not very exciting, but it's very deep and philosophical and it's quite an important book. Then I've got the John Ruskin's book. Um, I came across John Ruskin when I was reading Proust and Ruskin had a huge influence on Marcel Proust. I haven't really read much of this book, but maybe in the future. Then I've got the Kazuo Shiguro novels and for some reason I've got two copies of the Buried Giant, I don't know why. And uh, my favorite being the Never Let Me Go and The Remains of the Day. And Kazuo Shiguro is probably the only novelist that I've read all his novels. I mean he hasn't written anything that I haven't read. So yeah, I've made a video about him talking about his style and so forth. Then I've got Forster, collected short stories. Uh, he was a great writer. He, I think his most famous novel was uh, Passage to India about an Indian doctor. I haven't read much of his works. This is a great book about a teenage boy who who's suffering from autism and, and it finds people very challenging and society very difficult to understand. And then I've got the modern British short stories uh, edited by Bradbury and it's it's, it's a great, so you can read some of the most famous English novelists' short stories here. And then I've got one of, I don't know, I haven't read this one, Polyglots, I don't know if it's any good. Then Treasure Island, of course. 
I've got a few more English books which I'll show you later, but next I'll go talk about American. Let me start with Raymond Carver. He's one of the best short story writers from the United States and I love his writing and I, I talked about him in my Ameri top 20 American novels. And then I've Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng. I don't know how to pronounce the name. It's about a major Asian American experience in America. Um, I liked it, not not really enjoyed it too much. Yeah. Then I've got uh, Paul Auster's. I I think I've got like four or five novels by him. I like his writing. It's very easy, accessible, and they're short, so that makes it really easy. So I like him. And then I've got uh, Philip Roths. Um, I think Auster and Roth are both from New York, both Jewish, and uh, the language is very humorous. And I like the stories, quite easy, and I yeah, interesting. And then I've got this, The Legend of Suicide. This is a very interesting because it's based on a true story of and the father committed suicide and so the son was very pissed off about that. So he wrote this uh, sort of revenge. So in this story he reverses and instead of father the son commits suicide. So the father is left behind. And then The Girl with Pearl Earring by Tracy Chevalier. This is a really good novel about Johannes Vermeer, the Dutch painter and the love affair with this girl. So it kind of depicts the old Dutch city of Delft. And I saw the movie as well, so it's this is a really great novel. Then I've got the American short stories. And I, to be honest, I didn't really enjoy any of the short stories in this. So maybe it's just particularly at 2017, not a good year for short stories. Then I've got the only novel by Stephen King. I've read a few of his, but I don't have any of them here. So Finders Keepers, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Then I've got uh, Sol Bellow. I was really excited when I bought this one, but I read a, a few pages and I just could not continue for some reason. I, I was, yeah, so it's about uh, this story of Moses Herzog, a great sufferer, joker, mourner, charmer. And then, yeah, he writes letters to people without, you know, getting any replies for some. That was quite interesting premise, but um, yeah, maybe I should read it again. Tinkers. Um, I don't know. I don't know why I read this one. It's, I don't really remember. And then I've got The Road by Cormac McCarthy. This is a great novel. The writing is very poetic, but the story is quite bleak. And I don't really enjoy dystopian novels, and so it's not my cup of tea. Um, Huckleberry Finn is my favorite American novel, to be honest. And this is really unique. The voice is so beautiful. And I understand the politics at the moment because some libraries and schools banned it because of the language. And I think that's a shame. I think people should be able to read. This is a great work of literature. And then I've got the Raymond Chandler's Big Sleep, great detective novel, and Geraldine Brooks, The People of the Book, not great, but yeah, okay. And then I've got Catch-22, which I talked in my top 20 American novels. So yeah, the premise is fantastic, but the story didn't really grip me so yeah and then I've got Hemingway's The Old Man in the Sea it's a great 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 story and I, I do love short novellas yeah and this is probably my favorite American novel The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger and I've talked about this quite a lot and yeah it's a fantastic fantastic novel and I've got Edgar Allan Poe's Portable. So this is his essays, his short stories and his poem and finally I've got um, Steinbeck's Mice and Men. This is a great novella, short story, I don't know, it's very short. So Holly Hussaini is Afghan-American, so he writes from an Afghan perspective. I've got two copies of The Kite Runner, which I discussed in my video, and I talked about the conflicts in Afghanistan, seen from the perspective of the characters. And then The Mountains Echoed. This is another novel by Holly Hussaini. So these are my American novels. I do have some more maybe somewhere else, but these are the ones that I've got here. Okay, so let me start with Kafka. I made a video, a very long video a few weeks ago, and I spent a lot of time. So if you haven't watched, please, please watch that video. It's fantastic. I spent so much time. So this is a trial and metamorphosis and I talked about his life, I talked about his novels, short stories and then 10 lessons. So, and I've got Voltaire's Candide, it's a philosophical novel that's set in, in Europe, in America. So as you know, Voltaire is probably the most famous philosopher from France and yeah, it's a, it's a great novel. And I've got Albert Camus, The Stranger and The Plague. I included this in my top 20 French novels of all time. So 
Okay, gosh. And then I've got uh, Lord of Flies. I didn't really enjoy reading that. It's just too bleak and too dark. And about teenagers stranded on an island and they start killing each other. And Kim by Rudyard Kipling. Uh, it's to be honest, I couldn't really finish it, and I just read it. And but I do have another book by Kipling, The Man Who Would Be King. This is a fantastic story. It's set in Afghanistan about two Scots who became kings in one part of Afghanistan. So it's a it's a beautiful short story or a novel. I don't know what you call it. And then I've got Sebastian Falk's Engelby. This is a really good novel. Working class boy who goes to Cambridge and doesn't fight it. He doesn't really can't relate to the people around him because everybody is so rich and they come from a different background. So yeah. And then The Diary of a Nobody. This, I, I've started reading it. It's really interesting. It's comic and funny. So I would like to make a video maybe in the future about this. And then I've got Tess of Durbervilles by Thomas Hardy, which I, yeah, I have got another novel by Thomas Hardy. This is a fantastic story. It's about Tess. She suffers a lot. So I probably will uh, make a video about this in the future. And then Guy de Maupassant. I talked about his novel in my top 20 French novels. Got Rod Dahl's Completely Unexpected Tales. And I've got a... So he's, he's a great storyteller. I've got uh, Snow by Orhan Pamuk. The Turkish writer. When I was reading this, I felt like I was reading a Russian novel. It's very similar to 19th century Russian. They talk about the East versus West. So this is set in Turkey and the conflict between westernized intellectuals and Muslims. Um, Aesop's Fables and White Tiger. I made a video about this. This is very similar to Dostoevsky's Crime and Punishment, but it's set in India, modern day India. This is a self-help book, How to become rich. Very sinister. And then Mosit Hamid is a reluctant fundamentalist. Parts of it is not very interesting, but I found the beginning and the end very, very interesting. And I've got some Calvino books. Yeah, so yeah, he's, he's fantastic. I love Calvino. I, I, I made a video about him. Okay, and I've got this, I've got about five, six of them. This short introduction by Oxford. This is on beauty. Who doesn't want to be beautiful? I want to be beautiful. Yes, and this is on Foucault. Foucault was one of the philosophers that I I was really, really into when I was at university. So I studied political theory and philosophy at university and Foucault was like, I don't know, he's very magnetic to young people. Kind of the way he talks about, you know, the system and how corrupt power is and so forth. So yeah, I really enjoy that. And then I've got a few novels by David Mitchell. This like three you know this is this is probably the best one number nine dream it's set in tokyo it's great the writing is beautiful then i've got a couple of novels by ian McEwan, atonement atonement is a really great novel it's very beautiful and it's quite tragic as well and i've got the uh, shadow of the wind by zafon i talked about this a while back and it's a book about reading and library and books so quite interesting and i've got uh a Month in the Country by J.L. Carr. Uh, it's a short novella. And then I've got Nostromo by Joseph Conrad. Yeah, Joseph Conrad sounds really great on paper, but when you read him, I don't really find his stories very engaging. He's really not talking to today's readers, I would say. He was talking to like a hundred years ago. Like, Yeah, he talks about colonialism quite a lot. And then I've got Julian Barnes, Flaubert. The reason I bought this is because Flaubert. Flaubert is one of my favorite French authors, so that's why I... And I've got the Rumi, Coleman Barks, and I... Yeah, Rumi is quite huge, but I, for some reason I can't really connect with the Rumi. I don't know why. Shahnameh, this is probably the most important Persian book of all time. It's the Epic of Shahnameh by Fedosi. I made like three videos on this, so if you haven't watched, do watch the my summary and discussion of this book. Uh, Dostoevsky's Brods Karamazov. I've read this before, but I'm just rereading it, so I will make a video about this in the near future. This is his last novel, but also the longest. I think he just chucked everything in to make it bigger because he was dying. Dostoevsky was, I think he died two years after he completed this. And, and then I've got a huge brick kind of book. It's called Lucky Pair or A Fortunate Man, different titles by Henrik Pontepeden, the Danish novelist who won the Nobel Prize. I reviewed this one, so if you haven't watched, definitely should watch. Definitely. It's great. 
And then I've got a few, this is literary theory. I bought this very excited, but I haven't really read it. I don't know. This is political thinkers. I made a spoof video about this one. These authors or the editors or my teachers at the London School of Economics. So, so yeah, I was. This is this was a textbook that I had to buy. And then I've got a guide to English literature, Britain, and you know, on. This is kind of a nice overview of the English literature from the very early days to modern day. And then I've got a, some photography books. Uh, my job is as a photographer, so I do love these photography books. And yeah, so you can kind of nice to look at. Is. And I, yeah, I've, I usually do photography around this area. So this, and and finally, this is a book of haiku. And I love haiku, and I do write haiku. And if you haven't seen my Instagram, Snappy Haiku, please follow. These are my Japanese novels. So uh, this is a collection of short stories about different parts of the body. It's, it's quite interesting. And then I've got the Tale of Genji. This is a uh, abridged version, so it's not a full version. Banana Yoshimoto. This is kind of very minimalistic kind of writer. Deep River is quite religious. Endo is uh, Christian Japanese, so he's very unique in Japan. And then Yasunori Kawabata, Snow Country. And yeah, so this is my favorite Japanese writer, I would say. He's the most Japanese writer and it's very famous no longer human which i talked in my top 10 japanese uh, novels great novel and this one too it's very dark kenzibu oe was the second japanese to win the nobel prize and yeah personal matter is quite dark and then the convenience store woman this is a great uh, novel it's yeah published like a few years ago it's yeah so it's about a woman who worked in a convenience store for 18 years and these are my russian Russian novels, so I've talked about most of them already. Uh, even Turgenev, First Love, fantastic. And Dead Souls, I talked about top 10 Russian novels. And Father and Son by Turgenev. And then Notes from the Underground by Tostoevsky. Gambler and Bobok and The Nasty Story, these are... Uh, and then this is the only Tolstoy book I have. For some reason, I'm not really interested in Tolstoy, but I, I want to read more of Tolstoy, yeah. I read Anna Karenina a long time ago, and that's the only Tolstoy book I've read. And Pushkin, yeah, he's the father of Russian literature. And Dostoevsky, Crime and Punishment, which I yeah, discussed in a separate video. And then I've got the Anton Chekhov, the only novel that he wrote. And Mikhail Lermontov, a hero of our time. This is probably the first Russian novel in prose. And it's really, really fantastic, really amazing novel. It's a novel of masculinity, how to be a man. So it kind of talks about the dark side and the, the suffering and everything. So it's a really great novel. Then I've got these tiny penguins. These are the emperor penguins. These are like the baby penguins. I don't know. Uh, I love these books. So maybe in the future, I'll uh, probably send this as a giveaway for future videos. Ivan Turgenev, Nikolai Gogol, Chekhov, Dostoevsky, and Hafiz, the Persian poet. And then I've got a few books on writing. So as you may know, I, I do write short stories and novels myself. So this is a practical guide on how to write. This is a classic elements of style. And this is about how reading can help you as a writer, so a slow reader. So I really enjoyed this one. So I've got uh, these books by Kundera, Identity, Ignorance. I have to be honest, I don't really enjoy his novels. They're not very engaging. I don't know, for some reason, very cold, very rigid. And But I love his essays. They are so amazing. So yeah, highly recommend Kundera's essays. Uh, novels, uh, not so much. Uh, at least for me. And then I've got a few books on Proust. So this is a biography. This is a letters to the lady upstairs. So Proust had a kind of letter exchange or message exchange back in the days between uh, a lady who lived upstairs. It wasn't romantic, or maybe it might have been, but yeah, it's kind of interesting that neighbors writing letters to each other. And this is by um, Mario Vargas Llosa the Peruvian novelist, which I talked in my video on one of his novels. So it's a letter to a young novelist. Um, so there's some good advice here. Yeah. And then I've got a few books. So these are the Islamic mystical poetry. So yeah, for my Persian video on top 10 Persian poets, I had to use this one. It's very, very good. So it's got 
poetry from a lot of the Persian poets. And then this is the Rubaiyat to Markayam. This one I have to give away. I have to send it to the person. So I will have to do that. And this is classic novels, rough guide. So it talks about all different classic novels, which is great. And this is the German novel by Heinrich Ball, the Nobel Prize winner. Uh, it's a great novel about media, the power of media. It's a fantastic novel. So I'll review this one in my German videos in the future. Okay, so this shelf is all uh, Proust. Yeah, so this is my most prized possession at the moment. So if I have to give everything away, I will not give away this. This is my favorite novel then. So these six volumes by Penguin. And I have made like three videos on Proust alone. Probably the greatest novels of all time. So apart from Proust, the other French writer that I love, love is Flaubert, Gustave Flaubert. So I've got two of his famous novels, Madame Bovary and Sentimental Education and The Three Tales. And then finally, I've got a few more Japanese novels. So I've got Kafka, Kafka on the Shore by Murakami. So Murakami is probably going to win the Nobel Prize this year. I, yeah, I think so. And then I've got Silent Cry by Owe, which is a great novel. And Akutagawa is the probably the best short story writer from Japan and Natsume Sosuke, I talked about this novel a lot Bochan is really funny, it's interesting and I've got two novels by Mishima, uh, Yukio Mishima Confessions of a Mask and Temple Temple of Golden Pavilion so I talked about this in my top 10 Japanese novels and I've got a couple more uh, Kaobata's books Beauty and Sadness, The Sound of the Mountain and um, I do have some more books around here but those are the books that I yeah, I don't really like and they kind of dump them there. That's, that's all.